Section 9.6, predator-prey systems. The equations dr dt and dw dt are known as the predator-prey equations or the logka volterra equations. A solution of this system of equations is a pair of functions r and w that describe the populations of prey and predators as functions of time. So if you were to think about a population of, say, uh, rabbits, so those would be prey for dr dt, then you would think that if there are no predators, then they probably just grow exponentially. So it would probably just look like some constant k times the population of rabbits. However, in non-ideal conditions, there are, or in, you know, natural conditions, there are some predators. So we have to subtract off some number of rabbits, r, and um, some constant times that. That's give us some number of rabbits, times however many wolves or, or predators are going to eat those rabbits. Similarly, if we look at the population of wolves with respect to time, we would expect that in the absence of any prey, that it just the population of wolves decreases exponentially. But in actuality, there are usually some prey, like rabbits, so the population of wolves would increase by some number for each rabbit. So we end up with these two equations that sort of make sense how we get them. Let's do uh, an example with this stuff. Let's suppose that the population of rabbits and wolves are described by the log of Voltaire equations with uh, all of these values for k, a, r, and b, and the time t is measured in months. Let's find the constant solutions, which are called the equilibrium solutions, and interpret the answer. So we have dr dt. equal to 0 0.08 times r minus 0 0.001 times r times w. So this is our change in rabbits with respect to time. We also have our change in wolves with respect to time, dw dt, and that's equal to minus 0 0.02 times w plus 0 0.00002 times rw. So we could rewrite this as r prime using prime notation. And we could factor out r and get r times 0 0.08 minus 0 0.001w. And we want to know when this equals 0. But we also want to do that at the same time as our other equation because uh, this is a system of equations, we have to solve them simultaneously. So we take a look at values of r and w that'll make both of these equations equal to zero. And we see that, well, if we make r and w both zero, then they'll be zero, which makes sense that if there are no rabbits and no wolves, then that would definitely cause both of the equations to be zero. There's no prey for the predators to eat, and there's no predators to eat the prey. But more interesting solution would be if we look at the other factors here. Those will be zero when w is equal to 0 0.08 divided by 0 0.001, which is 80. And when r is equal to 0 0.02, divided by 0 0.00002, which is 1,000. So to interpret our equilibrium solutions, we could say that 1,000 rabbits can support a constant wolf population of 80. Let's use the system of differential equations to find an expression for dw dr, the change in wolves with respect to rabbits. So we already know what dw dt is, that's our change in wolves with respect to time. And by the chain rule, if we want to switch 
to rabbits, we could write this as dw dr, our change in wool with respect to rabbits, times the change in rabbits with respect to time. You can imagine these as fractions with a dr canceling, even though they're not actually fractions. So that means that we can solve for dw dr by dividing both sides by dr dt. So we get that dw dr is equal to dw dt divided by dr dt. And as we've seen, that's equal to minus 0 0.02 w plus 0 0.0002 rw divided by 0 0.08 r minus 0 0.0001. Nope, there's too many zeros. Two zeros. Let's now draw a direction field for this differential equation in the RW plane. So how about we put W as the dependent variable because we're looking at change of, rab uh, of uh, wolves with respect to rabbits. So with respect to it will be our independent variable. We'll make that the X one. And we can go up by, let's say, thousands for the rabbits because there are bigger numbers for the rabbits. And we can go up by 50s, I think, for wolves. Okay, that looks pretty good. So if we look at our equilibrium solution, that was um, with rabbits were 1,000 and wolves are 80. We would expect that to be, let's see, somewhere around over here. And the there was no, there would be no change in with respect to rabbits over there. If you plug in a thousand for the rabbits, then you get that dw dt is equal to zero. So that means that the numerator over here is equal to zero. So our slope is zero. So all along this uh, line for a thousand rabbits, we should have zero slope. So I can just put in a bunch of zeros. Then if we go, uh, let's say, a little bit farther to the right with rabbits, let's say we go a little bit more than a thousand rabbits and a little bit more than 80 wolves, then we can see that the change in wolves with respect to rabbits will start to decrease. So it goes down a little bit over here. But if we go below the number of wolves, if we go below 80 wolves, but we still go above a thousand rabbits, then it increases a little bit. And similarly, if we go less than a thousand rabbits, but we go more than 80 wolves, then it increases a little bit. And if we go less than a thousand rabbits and less than 80 wolves, then it decreases a little bit. And we can keep applying those patterns to keep calculating more and more slope values and we can see that it kind of uh, approaches our equilibrium point where the slope levels off near our equilibrium solutions so we can keep doing this and fill out the rest of our slope field So you get roughly something like this. It's kind of a pain to draw. We now want to uh, use the direction field to sketch some solution curves.
So how about we do one over here around our equilibrium solution? Looks something like that. And we can do another one. So we get all of these nice little uh, solution curves. We do one more over here. So you can see that they get like kind of egg shaped the farther you go out. Suppose that at some point in time there are a thousand rabbits and 40 wolves. Let's draw the corresponding solution curve and use it to describe the changes in both population levels. So I want to look at somewhere where there's 1,040. So it looks like over here, roughly. So it looks like I should use this solution curve that I drew on the outside. So that's roughly the shape that we're going to draw. So I'll make some axes. I'll go by how about 500 now for rabbits so we can see a little more. So let's say 1,040, right over here, we can call it our starting point P0. And then following the same pattern as the solution curve that we drew, we get a rough egg shape. And roughly something like that. So we've got our initial point P0 over here. Then it looks like our uh, maximum for rabbits over here, P1. And then it goes back over here, call that P2. And we'll call this point over here, P3, so we can describe this a little more. It looks like at P0, there are not that many wolves but then the wolves start to increase very gradually until we get to P1. Um, because, let's see, rabbits are increasing. So that should make sense. There's more prey around. So now there's stuff for rabbits to, uh, there's stuff for the wolves to eat. So then the wolves, you know, start to go up very slowly. Then the rabbits start to go down. You know, as the wolves start eating almost all of them. And then eventually the wolves run out of rabbits so then the wolves start to decrease again and they eat the remaining rabbits but then the wolves die out enough that the rabbits can start multiplying again and the rabbits start to increase and the cycle continues so to summarize this we could say that there are a few wolves at uh, p0 so the rabbits increase until P1 as the wolves increase. And then the wolves increase until P2. Okay, so then at P2, we see that the rabbits start increasing again. Well, not really. The rabbits decrease a little more. At P3 is when they start increasing again. So rabbits increase at P3. 
and our cycle repeats. Let's use uh, this kind of graph thing that we did to make sketches of R and W as functions of T. Use our solution curve, I should say. So how about we do them on the same axis so we can compare them. So here's rabbits. We can start at, uh, let's say, a thousand. And it looks like our rabbits slowly increase. Well, not slowly, I mean, they actually kind of rapidly increase. The wolves is what slowly increases over here. So the rabbits are increasing a lot, and then they hit like this maximum of P1, and then they start to decrease as you go along this ick. So we could start off at 1,000, increase, and then start to decrease. And then it does it again. Increase, decrease, increase, decrease. So we could say that this maximum value over here is at time one, how about, where T1 corresponds to the point P1. And then we could say this is at time two, and over here the minimum at time three. So this was our rabbit's curve. Let's do our wolf's curve on the same axis. So for wolves, I need a different scale. So how about I put that like over there? And I could say this is the wolf scale. So I could start out around 40. And how about I go up over here to 80 and then over here to 120. So then start off our wolves at 40 and then the wolves go up a little bit and then the wolves hit their maximum at a different spot than the rabbits do. Didn't like how that came out. Let's try it one more time. You get roughly something like that. Hopefully yours looks a little bit better than mine. But the general idea is that when your rabbits are hitting your maximum is not necessarily when your wolves are, they're offset a little bit. But you can see the cyclic nature, the way that it rotates around over here. You can see that uh, our wolves hit the maximum at T2, which is at P2, right over here. So uh, you might think, hey, this is pretty similar to when we were doing trig functions way back when. And it is, because it's basically the same exact idea. You look at the unit circle, you come up with um, separate functions that you graph in the coordinate plane that correspond to the, what's going on in your unit circle. So that's basically what we did. We took a look at our little egg. We came up with some nice periodic functions that are supposed to be nice and symmetrical that repeat perfectly that of course I can't draw, but you get the general idea.